What's up in War Eagle War Report, family? You got Ike Jones back, and we today are doing our over-under edition for the 2024 season. But let's get straight to it, man. Y'all know how we do right here, War Report style. Let's drop it on them. You are you now, are now listening, listening to the War Report. The War Report. Morning, Drop. It is another great day here inside of the War Report. Today's Morning Drop is brought to you by the folks over at Manscaped. Make sure that you have your grooming together and the folks at Manscaped can make sure that all of that is correct for you. The Beard and Balls Package. That just sounds crazy. But anyway, fellas, do you want your grooming routine to be one and done deal? Well, the days of using the same trimmer on your face and your private parts are over. Thanks to our friends at Manscaped. They've come up with the ultimate package to keep your hair trimmed groomed from 12 to 6 introducing the beard and balls bundle featuring the lawnmower 5.0 and the beard hedge trimmer a trimmer for the money maker and another for the boys downstairs get 20 percent off plus free shipping when you use code report at manscape as 20 percent off plus free shipping with code report at manscape.com for the premium grooming experience trust manscaped in here today morning drop style it is monday morning and i got my guy blake with me today uh, talking a little bit Auburn football season's about to get started, Blake. So we are going to talk about some expectations for the statistics coming into the season. You feeling all right today, man? Yeah, man, I'm feeling great. I uh, appreciate you having me on and War Eagle. Yeah, absolutely, man. War Eagle. For those that don't know, Blake is one of the guys over at the Up Tempo podcast. So y'all make sure y'all check him out. But Blake, man, let's get straight into this talking a little bit about statistics. So. Uh, we talked about it before we got on, but just for the people so they can have an idea of what's about to happen. I'm going to start on the defensive side of the football. I'm going to give you a statistic, and then we're going to talk about whether or not Auburn will be over or under that statistic coming into this season. Sound good? Yes, sir. All right. Last year, Auburn did a pretty good job of intercepting the football. 11 interceptions on total last season. So, Blake, this year. Auburn over or under 11 interceptions on the year. What are you feeling about that? Man, uh, that's that's a tough one. I'm going to have to go under that oh, excuse number. Me, it was 12, 12 last year, but still, yeah, definitely okay. under. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to have to go under. I do think I do think uh, Caleb has a has a big year. Um, I, I when I talked to Simp at the senior bowl, he said that uh, he's that guy that's going to be the next one at safety back there. Okay. Uh, I, I think he has a big time year, but. When I look at guys like Kay and man, I don't know how much he's going to get thrown at. I think he's going to be that lockdown corner. And then there is some some depth issues back there, mm. and uh, there's a lot of youth. So I'm just not sure. 12 is a lot, and so I'm not sure if they quite get there. Yeah, I, you know what? I think I'm going to agree with you and say under 12 interception this season. I think that um, the DJ Durkin defense – is one that I expect to cause a lot of havoc and maybe uh, put a little bit more pressure on QBs. I just don't know, to your point, that our secondary is really of the ball hawk nature, yeah. right? Um, you know, and everybody knows I'm a big Keontae Scott fan, um, yeah. but I think that he is really more of a, a pass breakup guy than an interception guy. I think he's more of a box corners you know type of guy who can come down and run support i think he's really good at you know coming off of the edge as a blitzer i just i haven't seen it from him yet no disrespect my guy you know keontae if you watch no disrespect man yeah. i just i don't know how many interceptions we're going to get out of him k and lee another guy that i feel like is more of a pass breakup guy than an interception guy and then to your point you've got the two safeties back there and you know i don't I don't get ball hawk from either of those guys, right? Um, like I don't know if Sylvester Smith's gonna get some opportunities to get, but when I when I, I don't I don't get a J Simp vibe from any of those guys. Yeah. I don't get a DJ James vibe from any of those guys. Um, so yeah, I feel like 12 interceptions is gonna be a big number. And um, yeah, I don't think that they're gonna get there this year. Um, yeah. even though I'd love to see it. Now, if they if y'all prove me wrong, then this defense is gonna be formidable, but I just can't see it happening this season. I'm gonna go under on that one as well. All right. Next statistic here, and this is something that um, Auburn did a lot in the Harson years. I know I'm bringing up the dark days, but still um, was forced fumbles. Last year, there were eight forced fumbles. Now, the issue uh, during the Harson years that have really still kind of been an issue was fumble recoveries. Right. So they were forcing fumbles, but then they weren't able to recover them. But still, we'll see. 
eight punch outs last year, forced fumbles last season. Do you think we're over or under eight for the number of forced fumbles in the 2024 season? I'm going to go over just because I think the pressure on the quarterback that this defense is going to bring. Uh, I think we can get some easy ones there. Uh, and and just guys like Eugene, man, and uh, Austin Keys, I think those guys can can make something happen in that middle. So uh, I'm going to go over. OK, uh, you know, I struggle with this one a little bit. I think I'm going to go under on this one as well. Okay. I, I want to I, I like your logic, though, of the, yeah. the guys up front being able to you know, generate a little bit more havoc. And, you know, I talked about this with the DJ Durkin defense. I do think that there's going to be more havoc uh, overall for the team. I just don't know how many turnovers they're going to generate. Like, I mm-hmm. I, I hope that I'm wrong on both accounts here, but I, I, I really don't know if I'm going to see a whole bunch of turnovers generated this season from this defense. So I'm going to go under on this one as well, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. All right, next up. I already said I think the quarterback's going to be pressured a little bit more, but how many sacks is that going to amount to? Last year, what did I just say the number was? 29. All right. Last year, Auburn was able to get 29 sacks on the season last year. How are we feeling about whether or not this year you're going to see an improvement on the number of times Auburn players will get a quarterback up out of there in the pocket? I'm going over 29, Ike, uh, just because DJ Durkin and what he brings, he's going to send pressure. Uh, obviously, you bring back Jalen McLeod. You got Keyron Crawford over there. Uh, and just up front, I think Auburn is going to be a little better than what people expect uh, in that middle. And and so I'm going over. Okay. I, I'm going to be with you on this one, and I'm, I'm going to go over. I do think that this defense is going to put more pressure on on quarterbacks this season and they're going to be able to deliver and and actually get the sacks this year i'm gonna go to over on the 29 as well um and that's actually going to lead right into my next thing right here which is marcus harris led the team with seven and a half sacks this season will an auburn player eclipse that number this year seven and a half with half with a sack leader last year is there going to be an auburn player that will get more than seven and a half this season if he stays healthy, give me Jalen McLeod. If he stays healthy, I think, you know, I know Keyron's got a lot of hype over there. Uh, I, I think he could he could possibly be the one to do it. But I think if Jalen stays healthy, he's the guy. Yeah, um, I'm gonna go over on this one, and I'm gonna I'm gonna double down and say I think that there will be two players on this Auburn defense that mm-hmm. will have more than seven and a half sacks this season, which is why I'm big on the over twenty nine number, is because I yeah. think that there's gonna be close to if not 20 from just two guys on this defense and the rest of the guys will be able to get more than nine so uh i think that's a a pretty safe bet uh if you know if there was a uh i don't know if if they're they're putting any kind of numbers like that on 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 these in the preseason about guys over under these kind of statistics but i do think that that's going to happen for the team this coming up year over seven and a half the the sack leader will be able to get that all right um Next up, we're going to talk total defense. Last year, Auburn surrendered 357.2 yards per game on defense. Over or under that number this year for the defense? I'm going to go, man, the secondary is a, it's a concern. But I'm, I, I believe in this Auburn defense, and I believe in DJ Durkin. Let's go under. Mm. Uh, I, I like what Auburn did in the portal and the guys they brought in, and I like what Auburn has coming back. I'm going to go under. I believe in DJ Durkin, the pressure that he brings, how he relates to the players. I like Charles Kelly on that back end and crime dog. I think they're going to do a great job. I- yeah, you know what? I do think the defense will be better overall this season. I'm going to take the under on that as well. I think that the the particularly, I think that this team will be better. Just, you know, we just talked about the pass rush. I yep. think this team will be better in their ability to affect the passer and therefore you're not going to see as many explosives. This is a thing that DJ Durkin said he specifically focuses on is limiting explosives in his defense. He wants the quarterback to get the ball out of his hands quickly. And then they rally and tackle. That's, that's literally the DJ Durkin formula, make the quarterback, make a quick decision, rally and tackle. Um, And it's about confusing the looks. It's about making sure that the picture that they see pre-snap and post-snap is not exactly the same, or they don't know where the blitz is going to be coming from, and so they're making bad decisions. So I think that with all of that factored in, 
because this was a huge thing last year for Auburn is just giving up really big plays on third down. Third down. And, you know, we're, I don't have third down defense as a, a statistic for this one. <laughs> but if I were doing that one, I would just mercifully say we're going to be under with the third down number of yards they were giving up on third down. Because when you actually look at third down conversion percentage, Auburn wasn't terrible last year. Yeah. Actually was pretty decent. The issue was they give up so many yards on third down that teams would feel comfortable going for it on fourth and very yeah. short. Um, and so I'm just hoping that the ability for this team to rally and tackle, make quarterbacks, make poor decisions is going to be better this season. I'm going to go over, excuse me, under on the total defense number there for the team. All right, we're going to flip it over here and we're going to talk a little bit about the offense. Before we do, we definitely have to give a quick shout out to the folks that make the morning drop possible. And that is the good folks over at Rogue Shop. Make sure when you head over to Rogue Shop that you make sure when you head over to the Rogue Shop that you use code FREEZE5. That gets you 20% off. Plus, uh, you know, it lets them know the guys at the War Report sent you over there. You'll get 20% off of your order at America's number one online dispensary. That's rogueshop.com. Again, use code FREEZE5 when you do. Get you 20% off of your purchase. We definitely appreciate the folks over at Rogue Shop for continuing to support the War Report and sponsoring the morning drop. All right. Let's get over to the thing I think everybody really wants to talk about, right? Like, oh, man, defensive statistics, all that's cool. Folks want to know about this offense and how it's going to operate this season. First-year offensive coordinator Derek Nix, Hugh Freeze back in the saddle uh, doing his thing as an offensive guy. I'm going to start with the big number, and that is overall total offense, and then we'll get into some more granular things. Last year, Auburn's offense produced 351.2 yards per game. Can Auburn produce more total offense this season? What do you think? I think you have to. And uh, I think with the weapons you brought in in the transfer portal, uh, your offensive line uh, with Jarquez and that stable of running backs that you have coming back, uh, I'm going to go over. I, I, I think that there's no excuses this year. Uh, it's It comes down to number one, Peyton Thorne. And uh, – you got to be better, cut down on the turnovers, and I think if you do those things, Auburn has a much better offense, so I'm going to take the over. Okay, yeah, you know what? I'm going to be right there with you and say this offense needs to be 400-plus yards per game Yep. easily, right? Like 350 is not going to get it done um, if you're going to get to your goal of the Vegas over-under for number of wins this year, which is 7.5. If you're going to get to 8 wins this season, I think that as, as much as I think the defense is going to improve, a portion of that improvement that I feel overall from the defense is they're going to be more rested. So the offense yep. needs to be out there on the field a little bit more. We're not, again, going to get into time of possession today, but I think that that's going to be clear that you have to be able to be on the field more, and I think Auburn does it this year overall. Um, Jarquez Hunter last year, 909 yards. This feels like an, This feels like a layup, but over or under the 909 total from last year? I'm going over. I think he. I think he eclipses uh, a thousand yards. Um, you know, he missed that game last year uh, right. at the at the beginning of the season, and I think he would have gotten one K. But it, it took him a minute to kind of get game ready, back in game shape, and then you saw Jarquez at the end of the season uh, really, really do his thing, man. I, I felt like he had a great game in that Ole Miss game. Uh, so yeah, I, I think with him back, I know it's going to be running back by committee, and and. You know, you got Damari and Jeremiah back there, but Jarquez is that workhorse, man. When when things get tough and you're in a close game, uh, it's third and two and you need a first down, you're giving it to 27. So I like the over. Yeah, man, I've been clear on this. I think that he is going to break the 1,000-yard mark this season. Um, yeah, it's going to be an over for me. If he's healthy for 12 games of, of the regular yeah. season, he'll have 1,000 yards before they get into a bowl game. And, yes, I do feel like Auburn's going bowling this year. So yeah. just the regular season, 1K for Jarquez Hunter, that's going to happen this year. I think that Derek Nix will have a focus on unique ways to get the ball into the running back's hands. Mm. Um, and it's just going to open it up more because you have the pass-catching threats on the outside. I'm going to take the over on that one as well. We'll stay with the run game really quickly, and we'll talk about number of rushing touchdowns last season. If my math is correct on this one, Auburn had 23 rushing touchdowns last year. Over or under that number this season in rushing touchdowns? Mm. You know, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna sneak it here and say under. Mm. And the reason I'm gonna say that is just because of the weapons that you do have. And I think you're gonna have a couple of I always say this, Auburn struggles on big play opportunities. We in the past we have just struggled in in you know going on a four play drive Ike, and and hitting a you know a 50 yard bomb down the field. I think you're going to have those opportunities this year and you're not going to have to drive the 20s, you know, from from red zone to red zone. You're not going to have to make those 14 play drives and things like that. So I'm going to go under. Hmm. I'm not mad at that under. Um I think I'm going to go the opposite and say over mm -hmm. just because I feel like, and, and again, this isn't a number we're going to do today. I feel like the total touchdowns for the team is going to be higher in general. Mm -hmm. um, the passing touchdowns, I think, increase, but I do think that the rushing touchdowns, because what I expect to happen is a lot of those big plays, as you say, but that are going to get you in there close, and then they're going to run mm -hmm. it in from like the four or the five yard line type of thing um, is going to be happening. So I'm going to take the over on 23 touchdowns rushing this season. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a little extra one here that has nothing to do with the over under that we have planned. I think last year he had three rushing touchdowns. I think Peyton Thorne has closer to seven or eight rushing touchdowns this season, mm. just off of four or five yard keeps down inside the inside the red zone some of that stuff that they had Robbie doing close to the the end zone last year I think they're going to trust Peyton Thorne to do a little bit of that this year not going to run as much but I do mm -hmm. think down and closer towards the end zone he's going to go and get his down there he was pretty nasty with that too last yeah. year when he started using his legs I think his game opened up a little bit more yeah agreed agreed all right now let's get this. This is this. These are the ones I think everybody, if you're if you're watching, you're you're waiting for us to get to this one. Last year, uh, in terms of receptions, let's see. The leading person in terms of receptions was Rivaldo Fairweather, who had 38. Good lord, uh, that just hurts me to even say. <laughs> 38 receptions. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Ah man, that that like that hurts my head to sit here and look at this number. Thirty receptions last year, mm. thirty eight. Man, over. Just good, good. Please, God, I don't even really want to spend a lot of time on this. We I, we agree that's over, right? Your oh, your leading reception guy is gonna have more than thirty eight catches, right? And and it better be Cam Coleman in number eight. Uh, he better have a more than thirty eight. That is so abysmal, bro. Like I. <laughs> I didn't even look. I mean, I, I it's like I remember the number, but I didn't really even look at it and like, wow, 38. Mm -hmm. It was rough. He didn't even yes. get to play tight end last year. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Um, so yes, uh, I think we agree. More than 38 receptions for your leading receiver this year. It's gotta happen. But let's let let's talk about the guy who's gonna be throwing them the football. Mm -hmm. Last year, Peyton Thorne. 16 touchdowns thrown on the season. Is he over or under that number this year? Over. I'm, I'm going over. Just, man, you can't bring in a Cam Coleman, a Perry Thompson, Malcolm Simmons, Bryce Kane, Keandre Lambert-Smith, Robert Lewis. Just no way. And if, if he is at that same mark or under that, it's an abysmal season for the Auburn Tigers. I'm going over. Uh, we've, we've just – We've seen what Cam Coleman can do already in his short time on campus. And and I've watched Perry Thompson, followed him through high school, went and watched him play four or five times last year. He's a freak of nature, man. And I just – you bring in one of the best guys in the Big Ten that played on a 10-win football team. Uh, and, and Robert Lewis, I know he played in the G5, but the numbers don't lie. The, yeah. the tape don't lie. Uh, the kid can play. So – just so many weapons. Jeremiah Cobb out of the backfield. You got Jarquez out of it there too. Uh, it's I just think there's too much, man. Rivaldo actually getting to go over the middle of the field this year, uh, and and just I think he's going to have a big year. I'm going over. I yeah. I this this number is another one of those. This better be over. Like yeah. he better have, in my opinion, 
Peyton Thorne needs to have at least in the mid twenties in touchdown throws this yep. season for Auburn to be successful offensively. Um, so if he's around that number, and like I said, I think the 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 run game produces probably in the mid twenties as well, probably closer to 25, 50 to sixty total touchdowns for this team on offense is what I'm expecting to see. Peyton Thorne, don't let us down, man. You got to <laughs> at least get nine more, in my opinion, touchdowns thrown yep. this year. Here's the other big one because listen. The equivalent to all the things that we've said about total offense and touchdowns and uh, what we think the run game is going to produce, et cetera, means Peyton Thorne's going to throw the ball more, obviously, over on total number of passing yards this season. But here's the big one for me. Last year, Peyton Thorne threw 10 interceptions over or under on the number of picks Peyton Thorne throws this season with the increased attempts. I think he, I think it's under. Uh, I think he's going to have a better offensive line. Uh, you have better weapons, better receivers that get separation. Uh, and like I said, I think you're going to see Jeremiah Cobb out of the backfield on third downs. Uh, I just don't see him with the panic that he had last mm -hmm. year. Uh, and it was tough watching no separation, him having to throw in tight windows, no no time to throw at, at certain points. And, and uh, I just think it's going to be all around better for him. And it's got to be, right? I mean, if you have the year that you had last year, uh, Auburn struggles again. So I'm going under. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go under on this as well. I think uh, what I'll say is I don't know if there's more separation this year. I just think that you have guys that don't need as much separation to mm. be open. Yeah. Right? Like Cam Coleman open is not normal receiver open. Right? right. Like, hey – if, if, if it's just me and another guy, I'm still open type of thing. Right? Yeah. So, and I think Peyton Thorne is the type that will just, he'll take that bet. He'll say, oh, it's Cam versus one other guy. No problem. Yep. We're going there anyway. Right. I think Rivaldo Fairweather open is different than other guys open. Yep. Uh, and I think he'll get more one-on-one -on -one matchups this season. So um, because I think that leads to more decisiveness from Peyton Thorne, um, meaning like, oh, I see the one-on-one -on -one matchup. I know where I'm going with the football. I mm -hmm. think you see less interceptions and, to your point, less panic. They've already talked about during this fall that he feel it feels as if he's got more command of the offense. So more command of the offense means he understands where he wants to go with the football. He's going to be able to make the changes at the line of scrimmage this year. So he understands to, how to get them out of a bad situation um, pre-snap. That should lead to less mistakes during the season. I'm hoping – the more attempts don't also equate to more turnovers. So I'm putting a lot of faith in Peyton Thorne right now to make good decisions this year. I'm going to take the under on that. How do you feel about the helmet, Com? Um, Because they're running tempo, I think it could be re really, really effective because yeah. you I don't know how many times they're even going to get to the point where they can't have co communication, mm -hmm. right? You have up until 15 seconds. If they're running tempo, they should have the ball snap before that 15-second mark. So – he'll have an opportunity to hear the coaches for the vast majority of the time leading up to the snap. Um, and if they're communicating quickly, because he, here's the problem last year that you have, and that I think is kind of an, uh, I, I know other people might talk about it, but an understated or, or uh, situation that I don't know that a, pe a lot of people understand when it comes to how quickly communication has to happen to get a play in is if the offensive coordinator and the head coach aren't of the same mind about what we're going to call and when we're going to call it, that leads to that getting communicated to the quarterback later. That gives the quarterback mm -hmm. less time to be able to survey the defense. Or first he has to communicate that out to the remainder of the, the people on the field. You know, they're trying to hold up cards and signs and signals and everything, yeah. but let the quarterback has to make sure, okay, you got that, you got that, cool. Now I process what play he's called. Then I have to look and survey the defense versus what we've called. So he needs more – if he's going to have more time to do that this year, that's going to be more beneficial for the offense. And then yep. if I don't like what we have, then I've got to get to a secondary play call, communicate that out to everybody, make sure we're all on the same page, see if the defense adjusts, and then do a whole different – all of that's got to happen within the space of what the play clock is going to be dwindling down. The faster you can process that stuff, the better the results are going to be. So the helmet comms are going to help speed a little bit of that up right for yep. him initial play call dissemination of that play call and the adjustment that needs to happen post um i think that's going to be helpful uh but again I, I expect them to be running more tempo this year so i don't even yep. know 
if they're ever going to get to a point where they're not going to be able to talk to him throughout the entirety of that. So I think it's going to be a good situation for Auburn in terms of those things. Love it, man. That's exactly what I wanted to hear because I feel the same way. I think it's going to help him tremendously uh, and, and take some of that stress off his shoulders that he had last year. And I just thought it was mind-blowing when he said that he wasn't allowed to change the play at the line of scrimmage. I don't. Uh, I said this on our show. I don't know how, as an offensive play caller, you go through 12 games of that. Uh, at no point in time do you say, okay, you know what? We didn't equip you at the – Soon as we get on the bus back to the hotel, back to the airport, leaving College Station last year, the next practice, all we're doing is working on uh, post-snap adjustment calls. Yep. Because it was terrible. We can't we can't go 12 games of that, man. Like, that is malpractice. Yep. Fire that man immediately. If that is what we're doing, yep. fire him now. They got it right at the end of the season. He should have made it through the entirety of the season, bro. Yep. I That's agree. crazy. I agree. All right, man. Anyway, we're going to get out of here. Um, good over under stat edition, man. Blake, let the people know where they can follow you and figure out what's going on over there at the Uptempo Pod before we get out. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at the Uptempo Pod. Go check us out on YouTube the same way uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you get your podcast on audio version. Uh, just give us a five star review over there. It helps tremendously. Uh, go sub if you can on YouTube. Uh, if you would like to become a member, we have been going to high school games already. Uh, Dustin's been to like three so far. I went to my first one this past Friday night, watched Shadarius Tootle, a uh, four star linebacker here in Mobile. Um, we do recruiting pods, uh, all of that good stuff, break down the Friday night film that we got and release that to our members. So go check us out. And uh, Ike, I appreciate you having me on, man. Yeah, absolutely. Always glad to have a member of the crew on with us right here from yeah. the Report Podcast Network. Um, and we always appreciate the people who help us pay the bills around here. And that is, of course, the folks over at Rogue Shop. Make sure you head over there, rogueshop.com. Use code FREEZE5. Get you 20% off of your purchase at America's number one online dispensary. Whether it's sleep, stress, pain, anxiety relief, Rogue Shop's got something there for you. Before you guys get out of here, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and go ahead and share that content with somebody out there. We'll be back at you guys with more great War Report content tomorrow morning as we get more into this Alabama A&M game. First game of the season coming up. So much more breakdown happening coming up soon for you guys. But until the next time, and as always, War Eagle.